Hey everyone, if you're new, this is Naveen. I'm currently a final year medical student at CMC Order and welcome back to the channel. I know every one of you who is watching this video, including myself, can easily relate to what just happened right now, isn't it? Irrespective of whether you're a student or you're a professional, you've all been there at certain points in time. In fact, some of us would have also been stuck into this loop or cycle of procrastination. So wherein a person procrastinates and then he feels guilty about it and then that guilt will result in anxiety. Because of anxiety, to overcome that anxiety, we'll come up with some beautiful new reasons that will make us procrastinate more. So, so that's how we fall into this trap or cycle of procrastination wherein we procrastinate again and again and again and that will eventually result in diminished results but what if i told you science has some proven tips and tricks that can help you and me to overcome this habit of procrastination and this video is going to be all about it and for those who have encountering this channel or encountering my video for the first time to just give you an overview of how procrastination works on a neurological level let me just give you a simpler explanation and let's just get into the topic of a discussion so this procrastination occurs as a result of a constant battle between two parts of a brain so first part of a brain being the rational part of the brain which is responsible for our rational thinking like decision making and all of that which is the prefrontal cortex and the second part of the brain which is involved in this battle is the limbic system which is our emotional part of the brain so these two functional areas of the brain are in constant battle and when the limbic system gets an upper hand that's when we tend to procrastinate and choosing instant gratification resulting in Netflix and chill so that's the most basic understanding of how procrastination works on a neurological level so now let's get in the topic of a discussion so now to summarize these powerful science-based tips and tricks I've come up with this phrase which is conquer every step so I'll be breaking down word by word and firstly let's talk about the word conquer so the first word is conquer so C stands for conquer and C stands for chunking so one of the best ways to tackle procrastination is to chunk a huge topic or a huge task that we are trying to accomplish in a respective period of time into multiple smaller doable tasks so research suggests that our brains tends to avoid more overwhelming and more you know kind of a bigger tasks and when it is broken down into multiple smaller doable or manageable tasks that's when we are more likely to stick with it so this has also been supported by this research article of goal setting theory which was proposed by Edwin Locke and Gary Latham so they suggested that setting specific clear attainable or manageable goals increases the likelihood of success similarly in this book called progress principle written by Amabil and Kramer uh, they've also discussed about this concept of small wins and how achieving smaller and more manageable tasks helps us to have motivation on a longer run and secondly every so conquer every step so E stands for every and E stands for eliminating distractions and by distractions I mean I solely mean our smartphones and I believe 99 percentage of a distraction is just limited to a smartphone and once that is tackled away then it's a win-win to us we all might think it's just obvious thing to you know eliminate distractions and stay away from these smartphones which will alter our productivity and can interfere with the effectiveness of a particular study but when I was doing the research for this particular video I came across this fascinating and interesting research that was conducted in the year 2017 Coming to the study that was performed in the year of 2017, so this study was conducted with nearly 800 smartphone users at the University of Texas and the sole objective of the study was to see what effect do smartphones presence at their proximities have on the cognitive performance of these individuals. So these 800 smartphone users were divided into a group of three, the first group being the desk group, meaning their respective smartphones was placed in the same desk where they were giving these cognitive tests and the second group being the uh, pocket group or the back group wherein these smartphones were kept in the pocket or in their bag which is still in the close vicinity but not as the first group because now it is not in their actual visual field where they are studying and the third group being the other room group where their smartphones were kept in a completely different room and to have a uniformity among all these 800 participants all of them were asked to put their phones on silent mode turn off the notifications so that they don't get any calls texts or notifications and a series of cognitive tests were performed during this limited point of time and in fact the results of it was pretty interesting so other room group had significant perform better than the two groups and guess what the worst performance was recorded by that desk group meaning those group who place their phones in their close vicinity of where they're performing those cognitive tests hence it was found that more physically close our phones are to our desk space or to our study space that significantly decreased the cognitive performance of these respective participants and the reason behind this is also quite interesting and fascinating because I was also astonished by the fact that it is not actually distracting the person who's studying right because it was all uh, you know switched off and there were no notifications which were troubling them during their study sessions but uh, the only difference between these three groups is where these smartphones were placed and the reason behind this phone proximity effect was explained by one of the study authors of the study Adrian Watt and he termed this as brain drain meaning if let's say the phone is placed over here right so yeah uh, I have a phone over here right so let's say my phone is in the study space in the same desk where I'm studying and uh, even though my conscious mind is not thinking about the mobile phone that's lying over there 
but still the process of requiring ourselves to not think about the smartphone that's lying over there uses some of our limited cognitive reserves that is precious and that has to be used completely to that respective task that we are putting in so that is what is called as brain drain and it was fascinating and interesting for me when i came across the study so i thought i should share this phone proximity effect in the brain drain so that if you think you are addicted to smartphone just keep it in the farthest distance that you could ever reach and that could tremendously change your productivity and efficiency of learning and i don't think it will be a problem if you think that uh, i'm no longer addicted to smartphones like me i was initially i think in the beginning of my mbbs i was using smartphones more than i should be using but right now through experience i think i've uh, tackled it but however if you think you are not addicted to smartphone but still uh, it is better to keep your smartphone in the farthest because let's say if you want to do a longer study like let's say you want to do a 10 hour study or 12 hour study in that respective circumstances it will be always better to stay away from your smartphone and it does tremendously work for me and it will definitely work for you as well so that's about conquer every and coming to the third word and the final word and the most important word which is step so s stands for step and s stands for start so starting is very essential when you want to tackle procrastination and that's the first step that i believe you should be doing and that's why i took the specific word step to denote the word start in fact i've stressed about the fact of how starting is very essential in order to tackle procrastination in one of my previous video where i explained the science behind procrastination so i would have talked about a graphical representation of something known as procrastination action line where it is very essential to you know overcome that inertia or overcome that threshold which is the difficult part of the entire task and once that is overcome the entire you know study process becomes a cake walk so i would urge you all to kindly watch at least the last parts of the video which i'll tag down in the description below in other words it's just as simple as Newton's first law, isn't it? Every object remains at rest or continues to move at a constant velocity unless it's acted upon by an external force. So all that matters is to push through that inertia and once that inertia is overcome, it will become a cakewalk because you will be more motivated to study and continue studying. And this important of just starting can also be explained by something called a Zeigarnik effect, a Zeigarnik phenomenon, which is also a pretty fascinating and interesting uh, you know, phenomenon that I came across, I think, in the pre-final year. And once I came across this, I completely changed my mindset about studying studying and uh, it has really worked well for me so yeah conquer every step which is chunk down the topic into multiple smaller clear doable tasks and secondly is every eliminate your smartphone keep it in the farthest distance ever possible or keep it in a different room or, or keep it away from your visual field and thirdly is step which is start so just start so that is going to be my three step ideology or three step strategy that i'm going to give you through my extensive scientific research that i did over this topic of how to overcome procrastination and i believe this will definitely change your life just like it changed mine so that's about it my friends and if you have reached till this very point of the video which most of my viewers don't i really thank you all for listening to my videos i believe each and every one of my video adds some kind of value to the viewers who's watching it and uh, i've really put a lot of my time and effort in spite of my busy schedule so it will be really great if you could click that thumbs up button so that the youtube algorithm will recommend this video to many more people and many more people can get benefited and don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll never miss any single video update of mine and thanks for watching see you all next video